From one islander to another, Isle of Wight Radio proudly presents John Hannam Meets. Welcome to another John Hannah Meets. Delighted to say my guest has been on my show just a few years ago, the wonderful Anita Dobson. <laughs> Hello again. Always nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. And as we speak, you're in the Shadow Factory at the NST City Theatre in Southampton. Yes. I came the other night and I loved it. Did you? Yeah. I'm so glad. That's brilliant. I must say, the people of Southampton, I've just taken it to their hearts. I got stopped in the street on the way in by a little group of them who came on Monday who loved it as well. Last time we met was in Southampton when you were in a show at the Mayflower Christmas show, wasn't That's it? That's right, Santa Claus the Musical. Yeah. That was a lovely show. Did you fly on? In some- I did fly on, and I had a beautiful white wig and a very silver glittery dress. It yes, was you did. <laughs> and I don't think you remember coming to the Isle of Wight, but it was the Southern Vectors Bus Company, oh. and you made a, a, an appearance because you were Angie in EastEnders at the time. Oh, I see. And uh, you were on a bus. and you, funny. And the bus had a huge picture of you on the back, and it was going for a year or two, you know. Where is that bus now? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I wonder. <laughs> and I'm so pleased when I look at you, you've got lovely teeth, right? Aww. When I saw you the other night in Armada, Frank, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth I, I thought, my God, the teeth, you know. But I know. Did they take a while to make them up? Or they what? did. That You had to go and have a sort of imprint taken, which was very uncomfortable, but not too bad. And, um, and then they sort of sent them to us. And I remember the director in one of the shots we were doing, he said, smile, Anita, laugh, laugh. I've, we've paid a lot for the teeth. <laughs> Uh, they were so, well. They, they were horrible, weren't they? They were, but they were meant to be horrible, yes, weren't they? Yes. And that was a great series. I loved it. It was lovely. I was very lucky to get that. It was such a lovely job. Yeah. I, really I didn't even know that the Armada sort of part of it took place off the Isle of Wight, which yeah. I didn't know. But an intriguing story. Yeah. So this new theatre is lovely. Four hundred and fifty seats, and yours is the first production here. It, isn't it? is. So the law was that it was a new play by Howard Brenton. Um, in a new theatre, first play off uh, with Sam Hodges directing. So it was um, it was a very enticing thing to be asked to do. And I must say, it's a fascinating story. It really it is. is. It's set in Southampton, which is rather mm. appropriate. Yeah. At the autumn of 1940. That's correct, yeah. And what I like about it, a very strong cast, everyone's good. Yeah. And there's a, an ensemble cast as well, so it makes about 30 on stage, on and off, doesn't it? Oh, the community chorus are wonderful. Terrific. They're all from Southampton. Um, they all have jobs to do in the daytime and other things, you know, that keeps them busy. But they all wanted to do it desperately, and I think they're just a, a wonderful asset to the show. <laughs> I love you because you're a quality actress and you can play, well, a sort of Lady Cooper who's rather nice but Lovely. rather up, up class isn't she and then Ma who's uh, <laughs> terrific and uh, yeah how do you sort of cope with doing two roles because you, you've got to change your voice and you've got to change your style I mean, how do you manage it well th- that was the clincher really when he said um it's to play two parts and we need an actress that can switch from one to the other quite quickly I didn't realize how quickly till I read <laughs> the script of course but um yeah it was it was very exciting idea because I mean I don't know anywhere where I'd get the opportunity to to play two characters so different um, and to leave as one character turn around on a sixpence and come back in as the I other know. Um, I love Lady Cooper. She actually did exist and lived in Southampton in the 1940s. Um, And the fact that she's American was uh, attractive too. Um, And Ma is a fictitious character, but, I mean, she's just a winner, isn't she? Wonderful. One of those sort of the earth, you know, knows everything that's going on about everybody. I think it's one of those parts when you wait for the next line that you deliver because you know it's going to be funny (laughs) and older people can relate to it instantly, can't they? Yes, that's true. That's very true, yeah. And, I mean, I didn't know the story about the Spitfire factory being bombed in the Second World War. I mean, uh, why would you unless, you, I suppose, you studied history or you lived in Southampton? But it's, um, it's fascinating that within three days of that Spitfire factory being bombed, the planes were up 
and in the air again. Amazing. Because when you and I were younger, we never had that recent history, did we? We were sort of going back to Henry VIII and all this stuff. So yeah. we didn't know that much about the war, did we? That's really? very true. And I think it's wonderful now that lots of people can come and, uh, and find out a lot more things that they didn't know about the wartime and about Southampton itself, its part in the war. Anita, when you came out of Webber Douglas all those years ago, you did leave him to heaven, didn't you, a TV I did. movie? Yeah. So did you have a career dream, do you remember? What, what, that was your first TV? Well, my first TV actually was Play Away. Was it? With Brian Kant, <laughs> right. yeah, which was wonderful. I mean, it was just such a happy time. He was just the most adorable man to work with. And it was fun and it was for children, you know. I suppose just before I went to Webber Douglas, I suppose in my heart I've had aspirations of being a Shakespearean actress. Um, <laughs> but then once I got out and started swimming in the big waters, I realised there was a lot of other things that you could do. So my joy in life is doing as much variety as I possibly mm. can. Well, that's always been, because you mentioned Play Away, you did Nanny, which was a good series early yeah. on, didn't you? Yeah. And then, of course, with Jim Davidson, Up the Elephant and Round the Castle. Yeah. That was fun. That was just before I got EastEnders. Wow. Yeah. Because I love Jim Davison because in those days he was a clean comic anyway. <laughs> He's changed a bit now, but yes. very clever guy, really. Do you know, he used to do about three minutes, five minutes, um, just him talking to camera before we actually started to record the series. And people used to borrow the laughter from the studio because he was just, had them in stitches. Yes. Brilliant. So 85, it was East End, as obviously everyone knows, Angie the Queen, Vic, landlady. Yeah. You did, well, not that long. You did about 136 episodes. I did three and three quarter years. Yeah. yeah. Was it difficult to handle instant fame? Because some people knew you, but all of a sudden, there you were, watched by millions. Was that difficult to cope with? It was a shock. I sort of went from naught to a hundred yes. overnight uh, because I was a sort of, I was doing all right. You know, I was a jobbing actress, but nothing on the scale to what happened after EastEnders took off. I mean, you know, you were on the front page of the weekend newspapers. It was, it was a shocker. Yeah. And my mother said, she did say to me once, she said, she said, one thing it let me do, she said, which I've always wanted to do. She said, when the press banged on the door, I just stood there and said, no comment. <laughs> no comment. Bless her. So in a way, life was not yours anymore, was it? Because once you become a, a star in the soap, people tend to think that's you, don't they? Yes, true. I mean, life is a double-edged sword, isn't it, really? I mean, it brings you riches on one hand, but it brings you lots of problems on the other hand, in the same way that something not so good that happens to you brings you tough things to deal with, but also it brings you unexpected good things. So I think you just have to, to you know, to try and weigh up the balance, you know. But for me, it, it was a necessary thing to happen because it put me on the map. Mm. I've interviewed Leslie a couple of times and it was great fun. And your storylines were terrific, weren't they, really? Yeah, the writers at the beginning of the series um, were just fantastic. And once... Um, the Watts family sort of started to, to get popular. They started to write for us. Yeah. So it was a dream of a part, too. I mean, Angie was such a dream character to play. Everyone loved you, didn't they? I loved her, too. I really yes. did. Yeah. Everyone felt sorry when yeah. Dirty Den started to play around or whatever, you know. But she was such a survivor, wasn't she? wasn't she? I mean, mm. she she would always come back, you know, she'd get knocked down like a skittle and she'd bounce back again. Anita, when you go back to 1986 Christmas, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now people would dream of 30 million people, but 30 million watched that Christmas Day episode when it was to do with the divorce papers, wasn't it? Yeah, amazing. You, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I can't believe it. And sometimes when I see that, that snippet... Um, that moment when he passes her the divorce papers, it's almost like looking at somebody that's a relative <laughs> because it was such a long time yes, ago. Yes, it was. Yeah. So wise move to come out from your point of view? Well, the thing is, when I got EastEnders, um, I wasn't young then. I was sort of way, way into my sort of 30s, mid-30s. So I felt that I didn't want to stay forever. I wanted to get out into the world and see whether that little boost could move me on in my career. 
Did they want you back? I bet they tried to get you back, didn't well, they? Well, they asked They asked me to come back um, and then they also asked if I would do a spin-off. Um, they asked me to go back, I think, when they, they finally buried uh, Dirty Den. <laughs> and I said, I'll only come back if I can check he's in the coffin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> but I've... no, I think once I'd left, I'd sort of thought about it carefully, the decision to leave. So once I'd made it, I just wanted to forge on, really, and I've been lucky. Yes. So I've never had to look back over my shoulder. Finally, I think they sort of killed you off definitely in about 2002, didn't they? Yes. Off screen, wasn't That's it? That's right. They rang me up and my agent said to me, are you sitting down, darling? I said, no, but I will be in about two ticks. So he said, oh, they're going to kill her off. I went, OK. He said, drink. <laughs> it's going to be the drink, <laughs> alcohol poisoning, which was very fitting, I think. Yes. So you moved on to things like Smokescreen, where you played Gertie in that, didn't oh, you? Oh, that was lovely. That was a really lovely little job, yeah. And Get Well Soon, did you like that? I loved it. I loved it. And I had to go and have my hair coloured. And I remember the lady who did my hair, who's still my colourist now. Well, she. I don't have my hair done now, but she has been for a long time. And she said to me, it's a very difficult colour. She said, they've asked for strawberry blonde. She said, quite <laughs> hard on television. And it was beautiful when she'd finished it. <laughs> I loved that character. Yeah, it was lovely. It's a really good part. Then you did a lot of big series like Red Dwarf you did. Well, it was a very... Um, Blink and you missed me, wasn't yeah. it? I literally went in and was shot to pieces. <laughs> but they said to me, do you mind if we, you know, dirty you up a bit? And I said, oh, no, go ahead. I want to look like Sigourney Weaver <laughs> in Alien. Yes. You did The Last Detective. Yes. I love that series. Yeah. And there's a great dog in that series, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, oh, I've loved, you know, people say don't work with animals and, and children. And I think they're completely wrong. They're wonderful. I mean, I've worked with quite a lot of dogs. I yes. mean, you know, of the animal kind. Yes. Uh, and, and a few of the others. And a few of the others. Um, and they're wonderful. They're so well behaved. They respond really well. You know, if they like you, they show it. And children, of course, will always tell you the truth, which yes. I love. And new tricks, because that was a mega series, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, I, that was quite saucy, that one. Yeah, Miss oh, yeah. Lash, wasn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good fun. And the Hotel Babylon, because lots of these were really big series, weren't they? Yeah. I sort of did a, a time of just popping in and out of everybody's series, really, which was, was that lovely. Good? Yeah. yeah, it was fun. It was really good. Because you got to play lots of different characters, you know, it was t terrific. It was really good training, yeah. You did Casualty and Holby, I think, over the years, over haven't the you? Over the years, I've popped in and out of them a few times, yeah. Is it quite fun just going in for a one-off? Because obviously you're a guest star in a way, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, no, it is. It's lovely. You know, sometimes there's people there that you still remember, if, if it's not too long, the gap. Um, and sometimes it's a whole new kind of crew. But yeah, it's lovely. It's nice to go back because you know the, the place, the area. But um, yeah, it's lovely because you get to play a different character. Mm. You did The Fall of the Craze too, didn't you? I did. Did. I just felt I had to be in it. I just thought I'm I'm a true East Ender, and if I'm not in one of these craze films, it would be a real shame for me. So yeah. I mean, their memory just lives on, doesn't it? Because there's new movies about them, and yeah. uh, and it's amazing, really. Yeah, well, I suppose they're quite a fascinating duo, aren't they? Because they were so, both of them, one of them quite a strange animal, and both of them sort of ruling the East End like they did, you know, and twins that were completely kind of entwined in each other's lives, inseparable, you know, couldn't mm. really function well without each other. I think it's quite an interesting study, isn't it? Every Sunday I sit indoors on my own watching uh, Call the Midwife and, and I usually shed a tear because it's a sad show. Often, isn't it? And you were in the Christmas one, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, aren't they good scripts? Wonderful. I mean, oh, wonderful scripts. And I thought the Christmas episode was terrific. It made you cry. It made you laugh. It was just, it was joyful. It really was one joyful. of the biggest hits, wasn't it, over Christmas mm. from a viewer's point of view? Yeah. 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 Then you turned out was uh, Simon Callow, didn't you? Yeah. That was, a, we did, um, we did, we did three episodes first and then we got commissioned to do another six. Yeah, I think that's it now. I don't think they'll be doing any more. But it was so lovely, Bill Patterson and Simon Callow. I mean, just lovely. Yeah. Rebellious pensioner, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. It's great, isn't it? Oh, he yeah. was so naughty. It was good fun, though. Real classy actor, isn't he? He's done everything. Oh, yeah. Well, a bit like you. You've done so many different roles, haven't yeah. you, really? But he's, re he's like my husband, Simon. He's really, really clever. He's a, he's a polymath. 
He's one of those people that knows a lot about lots of different things. Very bright, very intellectual, lovely man. We're in Southampton. Back in 1980, you did some rep in Salisbury, I think, didn't you? Do you remember I that? I did. I did. I did um, Side by Side by Sondheim and Pygmalion. Yeah. Of course, in those days, uh, there were lots and lots of reps, and they were so sort of beneficial for young actors, weren't they, really? For me, it was wonderful. I mean, I, I did quite a lot in rep, you know, sort of through the years. Canterbury, all over the place, you know, sort of doing lots of different... And it also gives you the opportunity to to kind of... Um, it's like not an apprenticeship, but almost. It's a way of sort of just learning, 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 doing lots of different parts lo- in lots of different places with lots of different directors, different companies. I think it's a really good training ground, really, for a young actor or actress. With Weekly Rep, of course, you were sort of doing one or rehearsing another and uh, yeah. learning lines for I've another. never done that. Not yeah, weekly I mean, work. No, 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 no. It must have been awful, mustn't it? Well, I suppose you get used to it like everything, you know. It's sort of a, a kind of muscle that you start to exercise. And, but, it, I mean, it must be, yeah, shocking to <gasps> an do. Old, an old actor said to me once, someone said about, uh, what's the line? And the actor said, don't worry about what's the line, what's the so-and-so play? <laughs> 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 Which could happen. <laughs> True enough, yes. Right, completely different, Strictly Come Dancing then. <gasps> Looking back, I bet you were pleased you did it, weren't you? Yes. I mean, they asked me about three times before I finally said yes, because um, I'm not very big on reality shows, but that one, because you, I've always wished I'd trained as a dancer, um, and I love dancers so much, and my parents went ballroom dancing. So um, it was something that was, it meant you learnt something. You actually, you know. So when the li- and also my best friend said to me, "What is it that's stopping you?" And I said, "Well, you know, I don't want to make an idiot of myself." She said, "At your age, you're bothered." <laughs> and I said, "You're dead right. You know, I should just go and have fun." So I sort of parked my career and then went off and pretended I was a dancer for the duration of the time that I was in it. Is it hard work when you're rehearsing each week? Is it long yeah, hours? And yeah. it's long hours, especially for someone like me, because dancers pick things up extremely quickly someone like me I have to go over and over and over it until it's sort of it's ironed into my body um so yes it did take me quite a a, a long time to do it. in fact the, the one that I was best at was the one that I had the longest to rehearse at <laughs> um and each week a different part of your body aches because you're using different muscles you know you're using more of your back in one or you're using your knees a lot more in another so yeah but it was it made me really appreciate even more how clever dancers are. Was your partner ill at one time? Yes. Um, we got to Wembley, and then at Wembley, he got an infection in his knee. And so the following week, which was the week I left, um, I had to dance. Well, I didn't have to, but I mean, they asked me to dance with, with Brendan, Brendan Cole, um, who's just about to leave, I believe. Yes. Yeah, yes. poor thing, which is a shame. Um, so yeah, so it was um, it was a, it was a bit of a shock because it it literally happened. I mean, we we got through Wembley on the Saturday, and on the Sunday they rang and said tomorrow you'll be dancing with Brendan. So Gosh. it was yeah, it was it's quite strange because you build up a chemistry, and mm. Robin and I just laughed so much. I mean. We were both gigglers and he was fun. And Brendan, although he's a terrific dancer and fantastic, and I think probably I I actually counted the steps much more than I'd ever done with him. But it, it, it takes you a while to get used to a new dancer, doesn't it? I mm. mean, I, I thought it was a really good routine, but I think my time was just up. Yeah. You wouldn't go in the jungle, would you? No. No. There's no, 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 not enough money in the world to make me go into the jungle. What, to eat worms? And no, 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 no. In 1986 also, you were sort of top of the pots. You had a top five hit, didn't you? That was funny. How, how did you take that then? Well, it was odd because I didn't know who I was. Am I Anita Dobson? Am I a pop star? Am I <laughs> Angie Watts singing a track from the show? It was kind of a... But it was fun. It was such fun. And to say you've been on it, I mean, how lucky am I? So... Here we are, quite a few years on from EastEnders. Are you still an ambitious actor? Do you still want to do lots of things? Or are you sort of happy to run down slightly? I think I'm much more selective now. I mean, um, when I was younger, of course, you have to work to pay the rent. I don't have to do that now, thankfully. Um, But yes, I still want to do things. You know, like when this job came up, you know, I was all ready for a little rest after Christmas. And then I couldn't resist 
So I suppose it's, it's still there, the desire to climb mountains, new ones. Yeah, the right thing comes along. I'm your gal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're here until March the 3rd with the mm -hmm. Shadow Factory. And so you said earlier it was really tough to get into, was it? There was well, a it lot wasn't that so much. Um, it was the technical that, that was hard. Uh, we rehearsed in London for three weeks and we came here and did another week here, rehearsals. And then we went into tech. And, of course, it's a new play. Mm. Um, we, the set and the configuration of the room, the people on three sides, was different. Most of us hadn't done it before. Plus, we had a very new and different lighting rig, which has sort of been partly one of the stars of the show in a so way. Really, yeah. But um, it was quite difficult to get it to work and get enough light on the actors. So we kind of spent the best part of a week lighting it, and then we had to go back and trim it back so that there was a balance between um, the fun of the, the, the lighting and also the, the piece spoke quite strong through that. It's very intimate because you're quite close to the audience mm. at times, aren't you? Yeah, I can't see you very clearly, though. No. <laughs> Frankly, <laughs> we can lady, see you. The other little old lady said to me, she said, oh, I was in Armandia, I was right in the front row. I said, oh, how lovely, but of course I couldn't see no. her, so... And the noise, you know, the effects, the, the sort of sound effects are fantastic, aren't they? Mm. Quite, mm. Are they quite loud? Yeah, but, you you know, you sort of almost duck because you think there's a spitfire coming overhead. I think yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah, and when the bomb goes off, that's amazing, isn't it? Just before you go, I know you're busy, you've got a show to do tonight. If you hadn't been an actress or an actor, as they call you now, anything else you would like to have done in your life, Anita, or not really? I think now, I think if... I hadn't followed this career, I would have been a therapist. Would you? Because people fascinate me. That's why I joined up, really. I love people and the way people react to certain situations and, and finding out about um, what goes on in different people's minds. So I think probably that I would have been attracted to, to finding out about people in a different way. Yeah. And I like helping people, too. So, obviously, people still fondly remember you for Angie Watson. Do you find they still want to come up and talk about the good old days or not so much now? Not so much now, no. Which is but all they, right, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but they still remember her fondly, which only brings me joy. I mean, to have created something like that, which still lives on, makes me very proud. Anita, thank you so much for your time. I've enjoyed your career over the years. There's lots oh. more to come, I'm sure. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure for me too. Thank you. And you're here in the Shadow Factory until March the 3rd. Indeed. <laughs> I've now been joined by another member of the cast of The Shadow Factory, Catherine Cusack. Lovely to meet you. Hello, lovely to meet you. Just had a lovely chat with Anita about the show, which I saw on press night and uh, loved it. Loved it. You play two characters as well, don't yes, you? Yes, Lil yes. Dimmick and, and Sylvia. Meinster, is it? Or? Yes, Meinster, yeah. perfect. Oh, is it? Yeah. And they're so different, aren't they? Yeah, oh, it's, it's a gift. I mean, yes, <laughs> they are complete polar opposites because jackie's one of the big sort of uh, storylines isn't it really yeah in, in, yeah yeah so jackie the da lil's daughter yes yeah. absolutely yeah and uh, and of course you're a bit more sort of well almost snooty as lady <laughs> cooper's aren't you <laughs> yes yes she's an unapologetic member of the upper classes Sylvia. <laughs> so what's your take on it because it, it, it it's a terrific show isn't it it's 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 um it's been a blast. Um, it, it, I think Anita will confirm that certainly on opening night when you saw it, it was probably all about the, um, the changes for us because we haven't got the quickest changes. David Birrell's got the quickest change from Fred into Dowding. But it, there's a play called Noises Off, which is about all that happens it, yes. backstage. Yes. It was like that. I mean, was it was it? just running around chaos, throwing one dress off, throwing another one on, and, and running for your next thing. And now... It, thankfully, it's calmed down a bit, and I and you can enjoy a bit more of the nuance. I hope, but um, it's just a crazy show with the the community. You know, that's just been one of the most fantastic parts of it, having them be part of something like this, and then all the pyrotechnics of the lights and everything like that. So it's sort of been slotting in, really. That's how it feels. Catherine, have you learnt a lot? Have you learnt a lot about sort of things that happened in the war? I guess you have. Oh, well, 
I, I think I, I probably knew a fair bit. My mum was a member of the WAAAF because she was Australian. So it's the <laughs> Women's Australian Auxiliary Air Force. Um, so I kind of knew a fair bit. My, my uncle flew Lancasters. In fact, he went missing over Germany. So we don't really know what happened to him. Um, and he was quite, uh, quite a hero back in Australia. So I knew a fair bit to start with. Not about Spitfires, though. That was fascinating. Yeah, so that's been a learning curve. They're still an amazing plane, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're, they're completely sort of mesmerising. There was one in the square opposite. And mm. actually, we went to the Solent Spitfire Museum. Yes. Early days, and that was wonderful, because it was incredible the, what they've done there. But the one, I, could, I couldn't stop going over and looking at it, you know. And, and then you'd see someone would be uh, have their photo taken in the cockpit, and they'd be about the age of a pilot, you know. And you'd sort of go, all those young men... Um, yeah, but um, it is. There's something so iconic and, yeah. I went to a funeral on the Isle of Wight, where I come from, and it was an oldish guy. And as we came out, a Spitfire went over. Oh, wow. And all the sort of older people just yeah. stood yeah. there. And we thought, what a, f- a tribute. Yeah. Just happened to come over yeah. the church at that particular yes, cause time. Yes, because it seems like the sound is completely unique as well. Exactly. You, you sort of know, yeah. And, of course, it's three-sided here is it? it's not yeah. quite in the round it's yeah. sort of three quarters round Thrust, as they say yeah. do you find that easy to grasp um, it's it's uh, I, I really like it because um there's something uh, there's something hard to get away from being in a theater when you're playing end on cross arch you very it's hard to feel sort of three-dimensional in a funny way because you're almost like a you're a picture in a frame do you know what i mean so there's something about having an audience all around you where you, 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 if you, you have to keep it moving so you're not blocking people all the time and there's a certain choreography to it, but it feels like you can, you're a bit freer. There's a terrific rivalry forever between Southampton and Portsmouth. Oh, yes. Well, that's been... I've learnt that, yeah. <laughs> yes, and, of uh, you've got some of the great lines, don't you, to do with that? Anita does. Yes. She has the zingers. Yeah, <laughs> they're great. Yeah. But uh, to a lot of Southampton people, it's sort of... Well, it was great fun, really. But yes, oh, well, that's. I mean, we, there's a very early laugh when, um, uh, yeah, um, Polly says to Jackie, um, but he's from Portsmouth about yes. her boyfriend, yeah. and, and that's then. Then we know how much of a Southampton audience <laughs> we have in. Yeah. When you go to pantomimes, because I cover pantomimes mm. for the stage, when you go to one in Portsmouth, oh, yeah. they're always having a go at Southampton. Southampton. And when you get versa. to Southampton, it's vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> So you're here until March the 3rd. That's right. And uh, obviously it's a, it's a lovely company and yeah. uh, you're obviously all enjoying it too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very, it's quite short, the run, you know, it's suddenly over. But it's uh, it's been such a monumental effort with the community, with the singing, the movement, the, you know, the as I say, the technology involved. And, and you think, oh, it's all over in three and a half weeks. Uh, we've loved it. Thank you so much for your time. Much appreciated. And I would like to meet you again to talk about your career. Oh, lovely. So (laughs) will you come on my show in a week or two? Yes, of course. Thank you. (laughs) I'd be delighted. Well, that was super smashing great, wasn't it? Jim Bowen here, just reminding you, you've been listening to John Hannum on Isle of Wight Radio. Keep looking on the Isle of Wight Radio website, the John Hannum website and YouTube for more John Hannum Meets new interviews. Bye-bye for now. Isle of Wight Radio. Yeah.